Here's Ryan Hamilton. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, everybody. Uh, what do you, I didn't even... St why are you laughing already? <laughs> you want to start with my face? <laughs> I mean, where else do we go, really, right? <laughs> look at this. I look like this all the time. <laughs> Can you believe I look... I look this happy constantly. <laughs> Every day, all day long, I look crazy happy. <laughs> do you understand? I don't feel like this. I really don't. I feel... Uh, <laughs> I feel okay. I'm okay, but this is just inaccurate. I mean, I don't even buy it. I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, and I go, that is inaccurate. I don't know what you want me to do with this. <laughs> you want me to walk around like this all day? <laughs> People go, look at that chipper fella. I go, I'm okay, I'm fine. <laughs> People go, come over, we're sad. I can't help you. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> I just live like this. I feel like I look more like a comedy club logo than I do a comedian. Do you feel like that's true? <laughs> I look like a sign from 1953, don't I? That's, that's the kind of look I have. I could sell ice cream in the 50s, I'm pretty sure. I could really move some ice cream, you know? This is all I do, by the way. I just come up here and... Yeah. People go, we got our money's worth tonight. <laughs> I can't go places like this, you know what I mean? I can't just show up at a funeral, you know what I mean? I can't. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> ah, I can't ask a girl out, what are you doing tomorrow? just so creepy, isn't it? Creepy? I'm single. And, uh... <laughs> I don't like that that was the biggest laugh of the night so far. I'm trying not to be single, okay? I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't know what to do. It sounds so desperate, doesn't it? You should never say that out loud. Even if it's true. I mean, I'm trying not to be single, but there is no woman in earshot of that statement going, that's the one. <laughs> Dibs on that smiley, desperate fella over there. <laughs> But it's real. I mean, it's real. So there is part of this single life that's amazing, right? Don't get me wrong. You've got freedom. You do whatever you want, whenever you want. Maybe someone will wander into your life. Maybe not. You don't care. It's a great place to be, isn't it? Are you there? Not me. I'm not there anymore. Uh, I, I've been there. I'm not there. Here's where I am. I sit at home alone wondering, is this healthy? That's where I'm at right now. I, I'm so single. It might not be healthy. I'm not sure. It feels that way. <laughs> Freedom's great, but I don't, I don't pop up alone in bed in the middle of the night going, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> you know, I'm not rolling around in bed going, look at the freedom. I have so much freedom right now. <laughs> I'm not watching infomercials and eating a lean cuisine at three o'clock in the morning because I'm living life on my terms. Do you understand? <laughs> Seems to be for other reasons. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to meet people anymore. You're the only people I've talked to today. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> that I've really talked to. I mean, this is it. I'm not good socially. I'm not. This is fine. I don't... I don't drink. I think that's, that's part of it. This whole theater just went, you might want to give that a look. That might be... Uh... <laughs> Did you feel that? That might be right up your alley, maybe. 
I'm fine with drinking, but if you don't drink, you try to meet someone who's drinking. It's impossible. You don't want me around. I always get this feeling back like, who invited that guy? And he's going to remember this. So uh, <laughs> why don't you send him home? But it goes both ways. Your drinking affects my life. Do you understand this? It goes that way too. Your drinking affects my life because I'm a good listener. Okay, and I listen, and I listen, and, I, and then do you know what happens the next day? I end up alone in a park waiting for a picnic that isn't there. That's what happens the next day. It's just me and a blanket waiting for someone with a five-digit phone number to try and call. I know, it's depressing. That really happened. <laughs> Look at my face. I'm fine. I'm fine. Stop it. I was waiting at this elevator, and there was this guy on his phone, and he's just staring at me. It's really awkward, really weird. And he takes a step towards you. You're like, that's not weird, but it is weird. Uh, he takes a step towards me, doesn't even hang up his phone, and he says, like he's in a hurry, he goes, hey, hey, uh, do you know for certain if you've been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ? And I said, why, did, did he say something? <laughs> is that him? Are you talking to him? Can I, can I talk to him? Let me, I think I know what this is about. Let me talk to him. <laughs> Religious or not, nobody wants rumors floating around. You know what I mean? I took a leap of faith recently. I went skydiving. Have you been? First time you go, there are two methods. You go tandem or static line, which means they have a line attached to your chest and they just kind of, um, they just nudge you out. <laughs> and then the line pulls the chute for you and you just float down alone and hope you don't land on a freeway or uh, <laughs> maybe behind enemy lines, something like that. And that sounded scary to me, so I went with another man strapped to my back, which um, is also a unique situation in life. Uh, I wasn't sure if he was on my back or I was on his front, maybe. That could have been it, too, you know, like some sort of adult baby carrier situation. Just... Where are we going? I need a nap. Support my neck! My neck! That's my baby impression that I do. This is a side note, but babies creep me out. I mean, uh, who's, who else just stares at you, I don't know, all day, every day? Just, I'm always around babies going, what do you know, baby? Stop staring at me. All my friends have kids. Do you want to hold the baby? Come on, hold the baby. I didn't even want to see your baby. I mean, it's just... It's the most awkward 10 minutes of my life. I'm just trying not to make eye contact the whole time. I want to steal your soul. All right. Um, so I got this guy strapped to my back, and uh, remember that? He gave himself a title. He called himself Tandem Master. You're already strapped to my back. I know who's boss in this situation. Uh, I'm just going to call you Roy, like your name tag says, and we'll fly out of here. There were other people on the plane, these solo jumpers, you know, and I'm just talking to them, I'm relatively calm, everything's fine. Then one of these guys gets up, he lifts open a door on the side of the plane. I didn't know you could do this. I mean, I, I knew that there had to be a door, but I didn't know it was a scenario where a guy just goes, hey, there's the outside of the airplane. <laughs> and then he goes, all right, see ya. See ya. And then he left. <laughs> like he was going to get milk. He just... It really messes with your head when someone just casually walks out of an airplane, right? <laughs> your brain just starts going, that man's gonna die. And then it went, you are too, you're also gonna die. 
five seconds later, I have my feet out the door. Tandem master says, do you remember everything I taught you? And I said, I don't know who you are. I don't, I don't want to be here. All you have to do is keep your body in this art shape. I know this because I went through 20 minutes of training watching a VHS tape alone in a shed. That's how I learned how to skydive, just sitting alone in a shed thinking, I'm glad I signed that waiver. Could someone fix the tracking? I haven't said tracking in 20 years. I think they taped over an episode of Cheers. And then a guy in his backyard comes on and teaches you how to skydive. And they know you panic, so they give you these simplified words to help you to remember how to keep your body like this. These are the words, belly button banana. It means lead with your belly button, go into banana. And it just feels so emasculating, you know? So I'm in banana formation, and I'm falling to the earth. Oh, with another man on my back, sure. Two seconds in, my contacts, they're ripped out of my face. They're gone, I, they're just gone. Have you ever thought, hey, at one point in life, there's gonna be a force of wind. It might just tear things out of your eyes. I've never thought that. And when it happens, well, it happens very quickly. It, it's like, they're, okay, they're gone. So, uh, <laughs> let's reevaluate. I can't see, I can't see. I'm wearing goggles, but they're too big. Stuff's coming through. But since I'm wearing them, I can see my contacts. They're just sitting inside the goggles. 